when should you include ethnicity or race, sex and or gender, and age in your character descriptions in a screenplay? We received notes from a production studio and a screenwriter on our feature script for The Harlequin. In this video, I'll play the feedback we received, give my take on it, and then talk a little bit more about how you can use this feedback to help you shape your own screenplays. This is how stories work with Jay Shear. Let's talk about character descriptions in screenplays. First off, I always wanna thank Justin and Seth from City Lights Studio for the feedback. Let's hear from Justin, a screenwriter who's been in the business for over 15 years, about ethnicity and race and how it related to our character descriptions in our screenplay. Some of the characters have their race or ethnicity in their description, some don't. Is mm. that something that you guys purposely did or is there, what was the reason for that? Our screenplay is about eight characters, all of whom are comic book character archetypes, who show up at a motel because someone has uncovered their deepest, darkest secrets and wants to manipulate them with those secrets, essentially sort of a blackmail situation. Because we're playing with superhero and comic book character archetypes, just like The Boys or Heroes or any other films or TV shows that have been released recently, they're playing with a lot of archetypes. Just like those shows, we have to make sure that our characters are still unique and not copycat characters of someone else. For one, we don't wanna step on someone else's IP or their intellectual property, meaning we don't wanna just copy Superman or Batman and make it seem like those are the characters we're actually putting in our script. Two, we want these characters to feel familiar, but also new and different. One of the ways that we do that is by taking a character archetype. So for example, a rich billionaire who builds cool tech, but isn't super powered, someone like Batman, Bruce Wayne, or Tony Stark, Iron Man. And then we alter that character's race or ethnicity to make it new and or different. As an example, in our screenplay, the rich billionaire is black. It's like Idris Elba playing Batman or Mahershala Ali playing Tony Stark. It takes the archetype but alters it in a way that we either find more interesting or is at least different and it can have a different backstory associated with it. I have several thoughts about including ethnicity and race in character descriptions in a script. You could make a really good argument that if ethnicity or race doesn't really matter, then those characters shouldn't be labeled in specific ways. You can let the casting director and the director figure out how they wanna shape those characters um, when they actually cast the roles as opposed to you putting it in the script. Now, on the other hand, if the character's ethnicity or race is imperative to a deeper understanding of that particular character, then it should definitely be included. Otherwise, the character might be misinterpreted by someone who is creating your script. And finally, as Justin is pointing out here, there's a very practical reason why you should or shouldn't do this. If you set the expectation with the person who's reading your script that most of the characters, ethnicities, and races are important, but then you don't include all of them, it may cause the reader to pause and wonder if you, the screenwriter, made a mistake. In other words, if you keep indicating to me as the reader that the ethnicities and races of these characters are really important, and by the way, in our script, they are really important, which is why we have them in there. Now, if that's true, then anytime you leave them out, it could cause confusion, or it could even cause the reader to go, is this a mistake? And if it's a mistake, should I keep reading this script? Justin's feedback was basically, I would include it for all of the primary characters because if it's not included based on how important it is for many of the characters, then the reader could get frustrated when it's not included for other characters because they go, is this a mistake? I totally agree with Justin's feedback. Part of my revisions to the Harlequin will include making sure that ethnicity and race is understood for all of the primary characters, especially those for which it is really important. Now, as a side note, most of my recent screenplays have included very diverse characters. And that can be sort of a weird talking point for people in 2023. For me, it's not a political statement or me trying to prove I'm somehow woke or something. It's really just me trying to put really interesting characters into a story in ways that create conflict, drama, or add interest or intrigue. You can take that feedback and do with it what you like. I would personally recommend if ethnicity and or race does not matter, then why are you including it in the character description? But if it matters and it's gonna come up in some way, shape, or form in the screenplay itself, it's probably something that you should include. Now, really quick, before we get into sex and gender, if you're liking this video, please hit the like button for me so more people will get a chance to see it. So here's some feedback we got from Justin regarding a character named The Mask 
and that character's sex and or gender. The other thing is, uh, how do we know the mask is a woman right away? Like throughout the script, it doesn't ever say she's a woman. Like it's she's referred to as she, but like visually, there's nothing about it that gives away she's a man or a woman. Like, what are you, mm. what are you gonna do, or what what were you guys thinking about visually um, setting her up? As with race and ethnicity, Nathan, my co-writer, and I didn't want to repeat an existing trope. We wanted to add something new to the world of comic book characters and their likenesses on screen. In our script, The Mask is a mysterious character who adds many horror and or thriller elements to create tension and conflict. And there's some really cool visual elements to that as well. As such, the character feels like some sort of hybrid between Freddy Krueger and Jason Voorhees and maybe even a little bit of Harley Quinn thrown in there. The masks, sex, and gender were included in the script, but if I paraphrase what Justin is saying in the clip, it's the fact that the mask is female makes this character super intriguing because it's unexpected. Well, then what problem did we create for ourselves? We actually created two problems for ourselves. One, it needs to be clearer in the character's description specifically that the character is indeed female. She's covered in a lot of gear. She has a mask. So therefore, it was harder to tell that she was actually female. So we need to spell that out a little bit more clearly in the character description. Two, what Justin is suggesting is that we should play with that a bit more and make it more consequential to the story. In other words, what he's saying is, I really like what you guys did, and I want to see what implications it has on the characters in this particular story. Now, every time a character gets race swapped or gender swapped, part of the fandom freaks out. Sometimes that's because they really are truly racist or sexist, but other times it's because there's cognitive dissonance because the significance of the race or gender swap isn't included in the story, meaning that it can feel more like a publicity stunt or an ideological move as opposed to being important to the story. We obviously want our characters and their ethnicities and races and genders and sexes to be important to the story. Otherwise, we wouldn't just throw those things in there. My takeaway is this. Making the mask female means that her character is far more interesting and unexpected. And we should play with that more in the story. Plus, we need to update her character description so it's more visually obvious she's a woman so that everything she does in the script is received in the way that we intend. All right, finally, I'm going to play a clip about Justin giving us feedback on character descriptions and ages of those characters. Um, the other thing I had a question, um, you just reminded me, was the age. Like, some of the characters seem like, I know that some of them are obviously like Deja or like Jim are, you know, hundreds of years old at this point. But what do they look like? Are some of them going to mm. look like their 40s or 50s or are some of them going to look like they're 26 and haven't aged today? Like, have you guys thought about that? In our first draft of this script, all of our characters were younger. But before we put out a second draft, I told Nathan, my co-writer, I wanted to age up all of our characters, and I had several reasons for doing so. From a story perspective, our characters are dealing with shame and guilt. Remember, they're being blackmailed. So while plenty of younger people deal with shame and guilt, because we all do, I wanted to have them have more regrets later in life about that shame and guilt. From a story perspective, making them older made sense to me. They had to live with their shame and guilt for a longer period of time. It's a very deep-seated shame and guilt. But also, I kind of wanted to make them older for two other reasons. One, we see far more stories about younger comic book characters and superheroes. And two, I've always loved Tarantino's filmmaking approach, where he takes an actor who hasn't been working for a while and brings them back into a super cool role. I would love to do that for actors and actresses in these particular roles as well. Now, that particular question coming from Justin was more about curiosity. And so when I responded that that's why I made the characters older, he actually didn't have a reason to make any changes to that. So we should be good there. I just need to be very specific in the script and in the character descriptions about what ages those characters are. So given all of that information and the feedback that we got from Justin and Seth, which was fantastic, here are some important takeaways that I'm taking with me after meeting with a studio and a screenwriter and getting notes. One, getting feedback from people who understand storytelling and want your story to be the best possible story is amazing. Definitely see 
seek it out. Two, when it comes to character descriptions, make sure they don't confuse readers and make sure everything you include in them is important to the story. If it's not important to the story, maybe it shouldn't be in your character description. And if it could cause any sort of confusion to readers or cause them to pause and wonder if they missed something, that probably needs to be rectified in some way, shape, or form. And finally, be creative. Billions of stories have been told, maybe trillions. Try to do something different that still resonates, but don't force something just to be different. Try and make it relevant to the story itself. Special thanks again to Justin and Seth from City Light Studio for giving us this amazing feedback. Overall, they really like the script and will likely help us get it made in some way, shape, or form. So stay tuned for that, especially the short film, which is a prequel to The Harlequin, which we intend to film this year. If you're interested in reading a copy of The Harlequin, the screenplay we've referenced in this video, or No Vacancy, the short film that we will be filming this year that's a prequel to The Harlequin, then become a supporter of How Stories Work on Patreon on or contact me directly and let me know you want to read them. Patreon supporters also get to suggest topics and submit questions for any of my guests. So it's always cool to get an extra Patreon supporter. I hope you will consider that. Thanks for watching. I'll see you on the next show. Until then, write something awesome.